What is up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a VR spectator camera to go from this vomit inducing video to this and even create a third person view that you can still control in VR which will be better for the other player to watch you play or for you to record your screen and share your game to your friends. I'm Willem and this is Willem Tutorials, a YouTube channel dedicated to VR development and if you want more VR content make sure to leave a like down below. Now this video is made possible by the awesome folks on my Patreon so if like them you want to get access to all the source code of my tutorials and exclusive content, join us, link in the description below. But now without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm inside Unity in a very simple scene. I already have a VR rig setup with hand presence and if I go under the main camera, as you can see I added a cube and a sphere to mimic the head of the player. But anyway, if now I click on play, as you can see what I see in VR is now displayed on the screen of course, but it feels a little bit zoomed in and it's not very comfortable to watch. So let's improve this by creating a smooth camera follow that will display on the screen instead of this. So first let's leave play mode and to create a smooth follow camera, let's right click on the hierarchy, go to camera, we can rename it smooth follow camera. Now for its settings, we can remove the audio listener. Then if I go to output, target eyes, we can change it from both to none. This is very important because otherwise the field of view of this camera will match the one of our VR headset which we don't want. Now as you can see, the camera is already rendering on the screen, but if it's not the case, you can go to the rendering and increase the priority here. Because if we go to the other camera on our XR origin, it needs to be bigger than its own priority which is set to zero. So now let's go back to the smooth photo camera and to be sure, let's simply set it to 10. There we go, now at this point we have a new camera on our game that render on our screen. Now the fun part begins, cause with this new camera we can play with the other settings, like in my case, I'm going to increase the field of view to 75 to make it a bit nicer, perfect. For the clipping plane, set the near plane to 0 0.15 and you can even add more post-processing or go here in the cooling mask to not render some particular thing in your game. But in my case, I will leave everything like this and one thing is still missing at this point, it is to make the camera smooth follow the VR camera. <laughs> so let's click on add component, create a new script called smooth follow and open the script in Visual Studio. So in the script I'm going to need three variables. First the public transform target, then a public float called position damping and finally a public float called rotation damping. Now a little tip for you guys, if you actually write range 0 1 before both variables we will be able to show them as sliders inside the Unity Inspector. Now, if I save and then I go back in Unity, there you go. As you can see, we can see both these variables as slider that goes from zero to one. Now, anyway, now let's go back to our script. And the first thing that I want is to force the position and the rotation initially to be the one of the target. So in the start function, let's write transform.position equals target.position. Then transform.rotation equals target.rotation. And to be sure, in case that we disable and re-enable the camera, let's put this inside not the start function, but the onEnable function. There we go, now the final thing we need to do is to smooth everything in the update function and for this I'm going to use another trick, the lerp on itself trick. So let's do transform.position equals vector3.lerp, transform.position, target.position, and finally the position damping. As you can see, we are calling a lerp between our own position and the target one. As you might already know, the lerp gives a mix of two inputs based on the third one. So in our case, if position damping is set to one, it will give the second input. If it's set to zero, it will give the first input. And if it's anything between 0 and 1, it will give a mix of these two. So here, doing a lure between ourselves and the target will create a movement that will slow down if we get close to the target, which is perfect for us. 
So what's left is to do the same but for the rotation now with transform.rotation equals quaternion.lerp transform.rotation target.rotation rotation damping. There you go, our script is now ready. Let's save and go back to Unity. Okay, so let's not forget to reference our script. For the target, we can go under our XR origin and drag the main camera to it. Next, for both damping, I'm going to set them both to 0 0.1. Now, a smaller value will mean a higher smoothing, so keep that in mind. But now, the moment of truth, let's click on play to see how this looks. And there you go! As you can see, it works! The camera is showing on the screen and following our head. So, if I unmaximize these windows, go to the R key, select the smooth camera and disable it in the inspector, now you can even compare the screen view with or without that smooth effect. I think there is no match. And now you can of course record the screen to share the current game to your friend. But of course, important note, adding more camera is super computer heavy of course, so make sure to only do this to a PC and not a standalone build of course. So this being said, let's now leave play mode cause we are going to disable the smooth follow camera for now because I want to show you a similar technique, but this time to get a third person camera view that we will be able to even control in VR. So let's get started. Okay, so to set up this third person camera, let me first create an empty game object called third person spectator. We can reset the transform component. Then let's right click, go to 3D and create a quad as a child of it. We can move this quad somewhere in front of the player and the goal for me now is to create a camera that will render on this particular quad. But in my case, I have a screen set to 16 by 9 for its ratio, so I'm going to scale the quad as well to this ratio with 1.6 on the X and 0.9 on the Y. And if it's too big for you, we can select it, press on R and scale everything down together to keep the initial ratio. And there you go. Now, we of course need a camera. So if we right click on the quad, go to camera, we can make a camera as a child of the quad, but it's pointing on the other direction. So let's rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. As for the smooth camera, we can remove the audio listener, set the camera eye to none, and then set the priority to 10 and even play with all the other settings. But in my case, I will keep everything like this. And now we need to render what the camera see on the quad. And if you saw my tutorial on how to make a mirror in Unity, you already know how it is with a render texture. So let's go to the project folder, right click, create, render texture, rename it third person camera RT. And now we need to set the size of this render texture to match the size of the screen we have. Now, in my case, I want it to be 1920 by 1080. There you go. What's left now is to assign the render texture to the output texture of the camera and then drag the texture as well to our quad. And as you can see, what the camera see is displayed on the quad. So everything is already working. We can even for the quad material, change it to unlit to not take into account the light of our scene. So I am using URP. So in my case, the shader I need is Universal Rendering Pipeline Unlit. But as you can see, there is also a big problem. The camera is not displaying on the screen. This is because a camera cannot render both on the texture and on the screen. But I have a solution to this problem. And this solution is to create an image on our screen that will use the render texture as well. So for this, let's right click in the third person spectator, go to UI raw image. As you can see, this create an overlay image on our screen and we can scale it to fit the size of our screen by clicking here, press on alt and then on this little icon. And there you go, it fits the screen now. So what we can do is drag the render texture in the texture input of the raw image and tada, the camera render again on the screen. But as you can see, the image is a bit stretched right now. This is because the game view here is not set to 16 by 9 like our camera is. So to fix this as well, we can click on free aspect, then on the plus icon, aspect ratio, and write 16 by 9 and press on OK. 
There you go. Now the game is correct and everything looks great. But before clicking on play, I want to show you one more little trick that we can do and it is to be able to control the camera position while we are in VR. Now, as you can see, on my XR Origin, I have a ray interactor. And if you don't know what a ray interactor is, I made a previous tutorial talking about it. But anyway, now what we can do is go to our quad, click on Add Component, and add a XR Gray Interactable. This will allow us to grab and move the quad with this ray interactor. But before, make sure to set the rigid body that was added automatically to kinematic. And now everything is ready. Let's click on play to try this. How cool is that, guys? As you can see, the spectator view is working. You can see me right now playing the game in VR. And what's awesome is that I can even grab this camera and move it anywhere that I want, like a personal selfie stick. So fun fact. With the ray interactor, you can also change the distance and the rotation of the object that you grab using the thumbstick. So to show you this a bit better from not the spectator view, but what I see in VR, let me quickly unmaximize the windows, go to hierarchy and disable the canvas. And now, as you can see, I can move around and make the quad closer to me and rotate it with the thumbstick. And there you go, this concludes our tutorials that I hope you enjoyed. Now thank you for watching and as always, a big shout out to my Patreon that should appear on the screen right now. So if you'd like to support the channel and join our awesome VR dev community, the link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you soon, bye bye.